I was the victim of negative competition or social so, social espionage. You know, I'm very humbled because I didn't think this would ever happen to me. I made all kinds of excuses why this couldn't happen. Uh, I know the meme or the story of the sisterhood's a lie is talked about a lot for good reasons, right? There are a lot of backstabbing women who will give each other deliberately bad advice or aren't very faithful and truthful with each other and generally are going out of their way to make each other's lives worse as possible, right? I don't deny that women friend groups are generally not as secure, not as good as male friend groups. I don't deny that for a second. I have a handful of very close female friends, right? I have female relatives that tell me horror stories. Uh, Turf that was on YouTube for a little, Jessica Vogti, talked about how that was a huge problem feminists weren't addressing anymore. It was just how toxic uh, female support structures can be or female friend groups can be and how you know, they needed to work harder to fight for a sisterhood, right? I don't deny that, right? But I have to say, as someone who's been a victim of the Brotherhood, that I think it's fair that we point some mirrors at our own uh, camp, especially since men tend to crave more competition in life than women. That's just objectively true. My... Uh, Someone who I called my best friend for almost ten years, excluded me from the rest of the excluded me from the rest of the friend group just to have access to pussy. I found this out because someone I met through a coworker when going to his birthday, who worked in the Navy for f for five and a half years, leaving in May, told me how, what he did in the Navy. He did military intelligence. He studied. Why people, what, what makes naval evasion successful and not successful in particular. But he also studied what made the troops, uh, the smallest units of soldiers, or the smallest band of soldiers, uh, unsuccessful, uncooperative. He studied why there was Machiavellianism in the military, why people backstab each other, how people socially sabotage each other's career. I asked him about the concept of negative competition, which I heard for a friend er earlier. And he told me how common it was in the military. Outside the lowest ranks, I mean the absolute lowest ranks of the military, right? Like cooks and like like basically the stuff they make the dumb people do, right? But that that video of Jordan Peterson saying one out of ten people are too dumb to be enlisted in the army, or if you have IQ of eighty three, you're just not cognitively capable of being productive in the military, so they don't hire you. That isn't completely true. They they have plenty of positions where they put people like grugs, like gears. You know, like literal peon, like the dumbest of the dumb. Outside of those positions, right? Everyone in the military, like every part of the military is very, very Machiavellian. They're very cutthroat. They sabotage each other's careers constantly, especially the higher up you go. The cohesion in the military, outside of the ground, on the ground, or where operations are taking place, there is not a lot of good social cohesion. It is the norm for mil people in military intelligence to give false information or information they can't verify with a lot of certainty to people on the ground just to pursue their career, knowing there's consequences of life and death. Like that is just the norm in the military. And he was explaining to me how that you would discover if someone was plotting against you, conspiring against you, or just playing high schooler, right? And, you know, the same day I met him, the same Saturday, before I met him at the arcade at 8 p.m., I talked to another friend who, you know, I gave him his present and the, and the portrayer's, uh, the portrayer's present. And I was caught with the dismay of not even, yeah, the Wednesday of, the Wednesday of, I took the guy's advice, the military officer's advice. Right, I took the took the intelligence advice and investigated the last time someone's told me that. <laughs> you know, I, I told him about my long term dating problems, and he just plain out said, "There's probably people not telling you that people are interested at in jealousy, or there's someone deliberately sabotaging, you know, your social sex life." And I told them, "Like, I don't know, I have pretty good friends, or I didn't, I didn't think who could do it." Then I asked the last time someone told me someone was interested in me, or someone found me attractive. It was my friend who I gave the presents to. I texted him, I called him, and he told me, 
that the, the Dungeons & Dragons campaign I made AI art for, the one I had a whole character bio out, bio out, the one who I like was trying to learn how to do a muscle man, uh, wrestler kind of impression, like a mix between Conan the Barbarian, a wrestle, a WWE personality, Grudo for a Zelda co- uh, role play, for a Zelda D and D game. I wouldn't be able to implement. I wouldn't be able to use that character because they were doing D and D for months without me knowing behind my back because my friend wanted to have sex with a girl who I had a one night stand with that she didn't feel comfortable with because my family didn't like her. And I was excited that I had friends with benefits. And you know, she even texted me saying she wanted to end it. And I was very respectful. And the next day after she texted me, we went to a barbecue where I went to a barbecue for my friend's, the same friend's birthday, you know? And the fact that even though I did everything in my power, right? I, Respected her boundaries. I gave her space. I went a few days without texting her. Or a few months, she rarely responds. And... All... (laughs) Her only... She still didn't feel comfortable with me. She still conspired with someone I thought was my best friend. Someone who I called my best friend. To exclude me from my friend group. During a year where I had kidney stones three and a half times the size of an average kidney stone. Right? Where I was rushed to this sur- the emergency room, where I had three surgeries, fourteen prescriptions, where I had to go through, I had to navigate bureaucracy hell. Right when I was rushed to the emergency room, the hospital gave me a doctor that only ex- could only accept my insurance because it was an emergency by law. They had to. <laughs> they didn't remove my stone; they just put a stent in. So, I was in agonizing pain in the hospital. Right, I had to. I had three surgeries done over the course of a few months. I did. I was deliberately held from my social support network right i live in a developed country the united states so the chance of me dying from a kidney stone is rare but globally the average is closer to 15 percent when you include developing and like like non-developing countries in the united states it's like three percent i was even diagnosed with a genetic disorder a cysteine urea that causes them so i had a horrifying medical diagnosis that basically means i have to avoid an amino acid found in protein which is semi-essential. So if my, I, had to, I had to meet with a dietitian to get blood work done in February, right? To see if I'm uh, at risk of it, <laughs> having to live my life with a mal- being malnourished partially, right? Just to prevent kidney stones. And the, the point of perspective how bad this disorder is, I might have to go be it. I can't eat complete protein. I can't even have soy because it's a complete protein. I would have to exclusively eat pea protein and very minimum amounts of like cysteine, which is, so dietarily speaking, I'm very much limited in what can I eat now. I have this massive thing put in my life that means I had to change my life massively. I, I, I had to, we call it, I had a lot of stressors, a lot of new tasks I had to do this year. And all in the meanwhile, people were plotting against me. And I was like, you know, I didn't have help. I didn't have any of that. And they were, they, they just didn't care. And the fact that I just now found out is really humbled me. I, I appreciate women a lot more. I don't think, like, to be honest, it makes sense now that why more men would do this than previously expected. I had a friend who can't go raving with other guys because, like, guys make it too competitive. They gesture too much. And... Now that I've been the victim of this, now that I've like had someone like make my life harder for a girl he's known for less than two years, who I'm mean, less than a year at the point he started this, and he's been cheating. He, he's been like, it's so fucked up. I, I'm waiting for text messages from a second girl who stopped talking to me around the time I introduced her to him. And I feel hurt. I knew this guy for, again, like almost 10 years. Like the thoughts in my head are like, I never, like, I've had homicide ideation, right? I had like desire, like, I think everyone's had desires if they're a guy to like kill someone or punch someone so hard enough they, for, they forget they're alive or they forget what consequences are. I think everyone has had that kind of rage in them. At one fucking point. 
I am feeling I can't explain the amount of like like pain it is. I, I, I know I have to make new friends. I know I can't stay being friends with this guy. I know I can't keep the same circle of people. The fact that it, it's so high school with this guy, the fact that he would hide things like this, the fact he would plot behind my back, the fact that he would exclude me from the group when I had to go through, like, so much. And the fact that, like, every time we talk, he opens up, well, damn, it's been a while since the whole group's hanged out together. Yeah, I wonder why. Uh, he valued sex more than my time. He valued the approval and attention of one person over me. And the fact that he didn't, like, go up to tell me, the fact that he didn't, like, go out of his way to contact me and tell me, hey, she still feels uncomfortable, can you do X, Y, and Z? The fact that he didn't respect my time or my my cognitive... You know, he always says I'm smart. He always said these things. He always said he always says this stuff. But I think it's... For a while, I was scared it was just him manipulating me. Now I know it is manipulation. Now I know... He didn't mean any of that crap. I know in his heart that none of that stuff was true. I know from his actions that he was just fucking lying to me. He wanted something from me. And he wanted me to do, he wanted, he didn't want it for me. He wanted it for himself. I know that now more than ever. And I just, I don't even know how to compensate or cope about it. I really don't. I'm not. I'm just not, like, I was just not mentally prepared for any of this. I really wasn't. Like, this is, uh, really been humbling. I don't think the sisterhood's that much of a lie anymore. I think guys are just better at hiding when they're negatively competing. It's just, they're, they're so used to positively competing that, as of right now, I don't, I, the, the main negative emotion I'm feeling is I'm not good enough for friends or my friends are fake and that if i make new friends i might make the same issue picking the same kind of the same way people who have domestic abuse or domestic abuse victims keep picking the same following the same abuse patterns because they don't know how to find people who aren't abusers that's why i feel like i might go through and i know that's not healthy i know i shouldn't think that way but the, the women don't deserve the hate they get i really don't i really I really think we should, we, I really do think I owe them an apology. I really do. Anyways, thank you for uh, listening to me rant. I just needed to vent about this.